to do the uh, M480 iPad control, um, there's a couple things that you need. First thing you're going to need to do is update your console to version 1.6. This is now available on our website. Okay, so version 1.6 is, is required to do it. The next thing you're going to need is what's called a Roland Wireless Connect, which is a wireless USB dongle. And I'm not going to pull it out of the console here, but um, on the right side of your consoles, there's a USB port. You would stick the USB dongle right into that port, and this will give the console Wi-Fi connectivity um, that you can connect to a wireless router. Okay. Now, to, uh, the other thing that you need, of course, is the iPad application, and you can get that from the iTunes Store. It's free of charge, and you can download that right now. So those are the three pieces you need, version 1.6, the USB dongle, and then, of course, you need the iPad software. So let's talk about how to set it up and get it up and running. So what you will do is go into the system menu on the console, and you hit system, and it will pull up the uh, system menu, and you would go to uh, remote, which is function four. You hit that, and you'll see along the bottom, you have multiple tabs, and you pick F6, which is wireless LAN, okay? So once you choose that, uh, you will see a screen, and what you want to do is have the little red box over the setup section. So I'm going to hit enter, and what it will do is now change my function key so I can choose what kind of um, wireless connection I want to have. So if I want to choose a wireless access point, I would hit uh, access point uh, select. Now, this one is already online. Uh, so what would happen is I would get a list of all the Wi-Fi access points that are available in my area, um, in, in the facility that I'm currently in. The other thing that we can do is what's called an ad hoc connection. And an ad hoc connection will um, allow the console to create its own Wi-Fi hotspot that the iPad can connect directly to. So even if you don't have a Wi-Fi um, router, like we have a, a Wi-Fi router here, um, in your facility, you can actually connect, talk directly from the iPad to the um, M480 uh, directly through the USB dongle. So we're not going to use that in this case. We've actually connected to this uh, router, which is here. And you can see that when we're connected, we get a, uh, bars of strength, uh, what our IP address is, and things like that. So once we have it, uh, ready to go, uh, we're pretty much uh, connected. Now, the next thing that you would need to do um, is actually go onto the uh, iPad, and Chad is going to bring that up right onto the screen for us so we can see, because we've got this cool uh, application that's allowing us to share. And what I would do is hit the online button. And when I hit the online button, it tells me to look for the M480, which it sees, and I would just hit online. And when I hit online, it's going to synchronize the console and the iPad so that I'm getting the same information uh, between the two. Um, next, once I'm synchronized, uh, when I move something on the iPad, so for example, uh, hopefully we can get a shot um, that shows the, the console here. Pull this down, and as I move the fader on the iPad, you can see here that I get fader movement on the console, and vice versa. So if I adjust the snare volume, then I'm very quickly going to get the snare that's adjusted there as well. So any changes that I make on the console will be affected on the iPad, and vice versa. All right, so now to navigate it, let's go back to the um, full screen. Uh, you can choose if you're, what we're looking at right now is the top where the meters are. OK? We can adjust uh, or choose which of the uh, channels that we're adjusting. And then another thing that we can do is go into the function. And if I don't want to see the preamps and the EQs and things, I just want to adjust levels, I can turn long faders on. And now I get a long fader view of the, uh, of the faders. So again, just the ability to go into the background and adjust those faders uh, very, very easily. Another uh, great feature that we have here is a great safety feature. So you'll notice that as soon as I grab these, I'm, I'm adjusting things. And that could be a bit of a safety hazard if you're walking around your facility, you trip and your hand scoots across the iPad or something like that. So what we've done in the system is put in a knob fader reaction time. So you can adjust this to your comfortable, but what you have to do is grab the parameter until such time as the, um, the uh, little dB uh, increment shows up. And that will um, allow you to just quickly uh, move around. But if I accidentally hit the iPad, I'm not doing anything. I grab the function, and then I move it. So a nice safety feature that's there. Uh, let's go back, and uh, I'm going to turn the long faders off here. And if I want to go in and edit any one of the channel EQs, I would simply just hit the EQ display that's there. And now I can adjust 
the EQ that's on uh, that channel. So a couple ways to do that. One of them is, of course, to grab the parameter. And you can see it uh, move as I go here, right? So kind of a crazy uh, EQ that we can do. We can also adjust the type of EQ that we have. So if I want to adjust some different parts of the bands, if I want to go into the low mid section here, I can choose what kind of EQ. So if I wanted to put that uh, um, uh, peaking EQ in there, I could do that. I could adjust the frequency this way as well, or move and adjust the Q um, in there. So uh, EQ parameters, very easy to adjust and affect uh, in there. So you hit the uh, go back to channel strip right here to return there. Uh, other functions that we could do is graphic EQ settings. So uh, you could see here that in any of the graphics, I could change it to an 8-band uh, parametric, and that's what's uh, currently set up here. So I can you know, move these around. I can turn bands of EQ on and off of the 8-bands. And then if I wanted to go into the function, I can flatten that EQ here. I can also go into function and change that to a 31-band which is what a lot of people are more comfortable with. And just by dragging across this uh, channel strip area, I can choose the frequency band that I want and just make those adjustments as I need to. So very fast to be able to uh, operate. And when it's assigned, this section that says not assigned will actually tell you uh, what you're currently affecting. So if you had this assigned to your mains, it would say that it's on the mains. And if we go into um, this section here, uh, be able to to choose um, which graphic EQ that we're actually editing. Uh, so very fast to be able to move around there. Let's go back to the channel strip. And the last thing to show you is what's called sends on fader. Actually, two things to show you. Sends on fader first. Again, doing those monitor mixes really, really quickly. Um, you would choose which auxiliary you want to impact. So let's go to aux 9. And then I'd be able to adjust how much of each channel I'm putting into which aux. Very, very quick. And if you name your auxes, then they will show up with the names uh, here as the auxes as well. Last thing to show you is scenes. So all the scenes in the console are here. So if I wanted to recall that uh, uh, other need to know that we had the audio crossfade happening, um, I, you can see that it says fade. I would just go to need to know and I would recall that. And you can see my faders do the little dance there um, very quickly. So it's recalled um, that scene, and now it's updated here on the console. Last thing is uh, if I want to store a scene, so I'll go down here and store it, and I can do need, need you iPad, and do that, and now it's saved a scene called need you iPad. So you have the ability to recall scenes and save scenes on the fly. And that is the M480 iPad app.